So as long as you're trying to solve that problem in the game that the anxiety is playing for you, it's like, you know, playing against the house in a casino. It's a game you're designed to lose. How do I get out of this thought loop? When I am quiet, am I being boring? And when I'm talking, am I being annoying? <laughs> okay, if we think about this for a second, this is brilliant, by the way. So let's start by just understanding, you know, where does the root of this come from? Right? So like, do you guys see how this thought, am I being boring, like comes from a presumption that people don't like you or that you're not delivering value. And this too comes with a presumption that you're not delivering value. Like you guys see how both of these questions, even though the behavior is the exact opposite, like they share the same root. So this is really important to understand. So a lot of times people think that their anxiety is dependent on a particular thought, right? So like my mind produces the thought for me, am I being boring by being quiet or am I being annoying by talking? And so we, what we do is we focus on the content of the anxiety. What is like the worry that we have, right? Am I being boring? Am I being annoying? Like both of those are the content of the mind. But if you kind of think about it, that doesn't make any logical sense because if you're worried about being bo boring, the, the solution to that is to talk. And then if you start talking, theoretically, that problem should be fixed. You're no longer boring. But you wind up being, your, your mind actually tells you now that we're talking, am I being annoying? Maybe I should be more quiet. So from a logical perspective and from a thinking perspective, it's like a lose-lose situation. There's no way you can win because your mind is producing for you thoughts and worries and concerns, which theoretically should lead to a particular behavior or solution. But even if you engage in that behavior or solution, you're still screwed. So like, how on earth do you deal with that? And the key thing here is to go back to the root that produces these thoughts, okay? So like this is where, you know, as long as you feel internally, emotionally, that you are not going to like be pleasant to be around, if you are insecure about, you know, what value you bring to like other people's like social service, like social like situations, if you can't really like serve to be like socially useful to other people, as long as you hold that belief, that belief will spawn off thoughts no matter the circumstance. Does that make sense? So it's kind of interesting because like a lot of people will, will start, they'll, they'll try to solve the individual thought. But like what this, this picture beautifully illustrates is brilliant, right? Is that you can try to solve as many problems as you want to. Your, your mind, if you're socially anxious, is still is like never going to be appeased, right? When I'm quiet, am I being boring? Oh, talk more. And then when you're talking, you're like, oh my God, am I being annoying? Be quiet more. You can ping pong back and forth through this as much as you want to, and you'll never fix it. So what do you do about it? What you do is, first of all, recognize the process that your mind is going to like give you these thoughts kind of no matter what. And as long as you're playing at the level of thought, you're never going to fix it. And this is why people get stuck, right? It becomes a loop. You start looping because you're like bouncing around up here. Instead, what you need to do is go down to the root of it. Tell yourself, notice, first of all, oh, my mind is doing that thing again where it's like behaving at an intellectual level, but this intellectual content of my mind is being fueled by the emotion. And so instead of trying to solve that problem up here, just ask yourself, how do I feel right now? What is the emotional energy that is driving this anxiety? And once you start working at that level, like, so you may discover, for example, oh, like, I'm just afraid that people aren't going to like me and I'm not confident about myself because I've been in, like, isolation for a year and I feel, like, socially rusty. I'm concerned that these people might not like me. And then you can kind of sit with that. And it's like, it's not about a particular manifestation. It's sort of like, okay, like, I feel afraid that people don't like me. And this is why it's useful to work with someone like a therapist or coach or something like that, right? If you really have social anxiety, I'd recommend seeing, you know, a clinician if you have like a diagnosed social anxiety. And then, you know, once you start sitting with those feelings, working on that underlying emotion, then what you can do is like, as the emotion kind of, kind of starts to like empty out and decompress, the thoughts above will start to crumble. 
So it's kind of interesting, but like it, it's it's tricky because we sort of think like, okay, how do I deal with this thought loop? Because it keeps on looping up there. And instead of like dealing with the root loop, it's like, you know, how do I start move? Uh, how do I stop moving in this loop? Well, like the answer to stop moving in the loop is like you have to like empty your gas can, right? Because as long as you've got fuel, your mind will loop in that way. Those rational thoughts, those logical thoughts, those anxious thoughts will keep on looping and you will keep on trying to problem solve, okay? And that problem solving will never actually lead to, well, I'm not, I guess I can't say never, but it will, it's not really consistently going to lead to anything. Whereas the real money isn't actually, isn't dealing with the underlying emotion that's fueling the anxiety, Okay, so a, a good example of this. So we have a we have a, a, a video entirely about this on Dr. K's guides. So this is the anxiety module. Okay, just real quick. So there's uh, by the way, there's a video actually on thought loops. <laughs> so if you guys are there's but that's not the one I'm thinking about. This is what I call feeding the beast. Okay, so sometimes in our minds, so there are actually a couple of videos about this. There are, there are a couple ways that we deal with anxiety. And one way that we deal with anxiety is by like trying to rationally solve that problem, right? We can try to solve the problem of when I'm quiet, am I being boring? And, and when I'm talking, am I, am I being annoying? So as long as you're trying to solve that problem in the game that the anxiety is playing for you, it's like, you know, playing against the house in a casino, it's a game you're designed to lose because it's not an intellectual problem. So you can come up with, with as many intellectual solutions as you want to, and it's not going to work. This is the other problem with anxiety, right? Is because we have a bunch of like five heads out there that are like, okay, I just need to dot, dot, dot. I figured everything out. Like, I just need to develop confidence. I just need to do this. I just need to do this. I figured everything out up here. And then they try to do it and it never works. It's because all of your energy is being spent on sort of like the symptom as opposed to the cause. So get down to the roots of your insecurity or your lack of confidence. And notice in that moment, instead of playing the game with the anxiety up top, notice like, what am I actually feeling right now? Like, where does this insecurity actually come from? Right? And as you kind of do that work, as you start to notice, oh, this is just my anxiety producing all of these thoughts and worries. It's not even me. That's another useful technique that you can do is notice what is your anxiety versus you. And you're like, oh, that's just my anxiety. It's like no big deal. Like it's going to act up again. And you can even anticipate it. So the next time you go into a social situation, you know, okay, so my anxiety is going to start producing thoughts. I know it sounds weird, but as you anticipate it and then the anxiety comes, you don't fight it because remember, most of the time we try to fight anxiety, which just feeds the loop because you're adding uh, gas to your gas tank. So instead, what you want to do is take a step back and just be like, okay, we knew this was coming. Oh, wow. This anxiety is really powerful today. Is it so powerful that I need to leave or can I give it like half an hour and hopefully I can start to have fun? When you start dealing with your anxiety like this, you kind of take the steam out of it. You take the energy out of it. It'll kind of calm down and the thoughts will actually stop on their own. Right? So someone's saying <laughs> you have to fight the idea that you need to demonstrate value to others. I think that's the right sentiment. I wouldn't encourage fighting it. Right. So I wouldn't encourage like I know it's an in uh, interesting nuance here, but I would notice that that is a false belief. So I, I think generally speaking, ang fighting your mind and anxiety makes things worse for most people as they've learned. They may conquer it for a time, but it comes roaring back the next day. So I'd encourage people to just notice, oh, like there's a part of me that feels like I need to demonstrate my value to others. It feels that very strongly. I feel like super inadequate and I feel like a waste of space unless I demonstrate my value to other people. And then you don't go and bully that part of you. You're not like, screw you. Believe in yourself. Dumbass. You should believe in yourself more. Why are you so stupid? Start believing in yourself more. You know, it's like you got to be careful there. So you can conquer it for a time. But generally speaking, um, my experience has been that encouraging people to notice it is actually like more potent, right? So it's, it's interesting. It's tricky. It gets tricky. There is value to sometimes fighting and overcoming your anxiety though. Like, so it's, it's just like, generally speaking, people tend to know how to do that relatively well. And it's this part that people generally speaking need to learn.